The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, the 3rd of October. And what we're looking at here is low lows and lower highs. That's kind of the theme. And this is most important because we're finally starting to see the weekly charts get sell signals, and they might be upgraded to sell modes by Friday, this coming Friday. Even if we get a turnaround, that doesn't mean to say that uh, you can't keep going lower. Um, just at the moment, that's the way it is at this particular point. I thought there was just a chance, and I said to subscribers, uh, we're only wanting to buy the index itself on a very sharp, very sharp pullback. See what happens there. But in the meantime, back in the range, Dow's down 223 at 33,210. So it's taken out yesterday's low of 33,210. The low so far today is. Uh, 33,207. So that that is, it's, it's seeing the, the MACD very weak. The stochastic is 13%. The unbalanced form is getting extremely oversold. That doesn't mean to say it has to turn, but this is my one indicator says watch closely because this is the indicator that for me can give a tremendous amount of instant turnaround uh, indication uh, that's the operation. That's the way it works. Meantime, the weekly chart, 9 has gone under the 14. The That's the 9 period moving average under the 14, but it's a weekly chart. This whole bar is a weekly bar. You have to wait until Friday. Actually, you have to wait until Monday before it closes and you start fresh. So in the meantime, MACD's turned down. Stochastic said 23%. On balance, volume is still high. Now, this is a big quandary for me. Does it say that the on balance volume needs to go all the way down to an oversold level, or can you have a balance from here? Well, we don't have to deal with it now because it's a daily chart. That's your your. Uh, this is a little speedboat that turns around before the uh, the cruiser can turn, and then the uh, and then of course you've got your super tanker. The uh, the monthly chart takes a long time to actually turn. Meantime, back at the ranch, we're looking at the S and P. I want to go through these through these now because it is really imperative to be able to get some sense of market conditions and then I can start talking about the stocks stocks that seem to have held okay over the last couple of days <clears throat> more importantly the S&P is down 38 to 4250 and look, the S&P is down 0.9 percent the Dow is down 0.7 percent so the S&P is a little bit weaker but it hasn't taken out the 4238.63 low of uh, five sessions ago <clears throat> watching that closely but here you can see in the weekly chart you see that S that means that on a weekly basis, intra-week, it's not the end of the week, it's not Friday, intra-week, for the first time since it crossed positive and it just briefly went negative for a brief moment, that was in January of this year, the week of the twenty, or the week of the sixth of uh, January, uh, it had just gone pink for a, uh, about a week and then it went positive again. Since then, this nine period moving average has not crossed negative, and I have to tell you. When a weekly chart starts to turn negative, yes, if the main trend is on the on the way up, <clears throat> then you look at it and say, could it be a brief turnaround? And then we go back to green. But when you've had a dreaded H and you've done almost, uh, in fact, you've done your almost one-to-one -to, -one to the arch high. Remember, I drew this in a couple of weeks ago. I said, look, the height of this particular, let's go right there, the 28th of July, 4607.07 was the high. Look, the MACD was strong. The stochastic was very good. It pulled back just a little bit, but it was still very strong in the 90% area. On balance volume was about to give a reversal right on the on that bar. And then what happens is it pulls back, goes under the 14 period moving average, rallies, and within five weeks, it gives a nice bounce, but all it does is it gets to uh, 44, oops, 45, 41. And then it starts to arch over in the pattern that I always talk about. I shouldn't have said that, but I did. All right. Um, I'm sure we've got a lot of new people. We've got a new host today at 2, and a lot of people are now tuning in. To, uh, from, uh, if they tuned in for Peter Bruno, 
then there's a chance that they're also going to start listening more to the intraday shows. So we'll take that as, a, as, a, as a, an advantage um, for TFNN. And we're looking at patterns straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, and a mix of one and two or one and three. Here's number one and three where it comes straight down, straight line, there it is, straight line, makes an arch, there it is. Number three takes out this left side low, often makes only a peak A or a B and then fails. And if that happens, you can have a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. In other words, the measured move from the arch high to the base and then from the base down again. Well, lo and behold, arch high to the base now we're on the way down. We haven't made a one-to-one -one yet, but I've got to be really careful. Why? Because I was telling you that this right side had a weak MACD. It deflected lower. Stochastic was really weak. It had gone from 90% down to the 60% area. On balance volume made a little v inverted V-shaped pattern, a little pyramid, and came down lower. And now you've got the nine-period moving average uh, just intra-week turning down. But wait a minute, look at the QQQ. Index 100, uh, down 3.25 at 358 right now. And look at this weekly chart, made a peak, you remember, Chapman Wave peak Ds, what, what happened to this part, this last peak D right here? Peak D, peak D, look at that turn down. It went below the left side low. Now it's trying to come back. If it's a straight line move, very often you want, it comes back to see how it can hold above this base of support in the E-mini one-minute chart, and that's at 42.93. We're at 42.91 right now. Wow, this is really a, quite a story. So now, and you've got your Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down off the, uh, some kind of news at 8.30 or 10 o'clock, and that's what we call the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down. And Doji Candle. Look at this, this is a 10-minute chart. And look at this, look how important the 200-period moving average is. Here it's been resistance, resistance, resistance. And here, that's the one-minute chart. Look at the 10-minute chart. Oh, I love this. Um, look at that. That 200-period that two, that moving average, it was an area of support, then resistance, 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 resistance all the way through until about 4 o'clock this morning. Then it pops up once, goes through peak E, comes back down, tests it, hugs it, hugs it, hugs it, whoosh, comes back down. On this last round, you couldn't even get close to that 200 uh, at 43.22. So this is, gonna, this is a really important session, I have to tell you that. Now, I mean, let me just move this back again. So that we're going apples to apples, and here we go. <clears throat> okay. So what we're looking at here is the QQQ, the nine breed moving average, is still green positive. Let me just show you this in the chart that I like to focus on. So let's go there and we'll go QQQ or one, two, three. There it is. You can see holding very nicely, but starting to turn down. And for the first time, you see it was the black 14 period moving average was flat while the green one was still positive. Now the black 14 period moving average is starting to tilt down. It means that you've got your, uh, a combined trajectory to the downside, and yet that nine is still holding at this point. I would say 3555 uh, is probably the area where that, on a weekly basis, crosses negative. We aren't there yet. I'll be right back. That's a chapter here, beginning of October with some pretty for action. I'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So, uh, question, Basil, could you just review your overall positions, uh, uh, longer term positions? Your positions. Um, yeah, so I'll do what I can right now uh, to, as it's fair to subscribers. We are, let me just go through this real quickly. So we are short the Dow, um, and we remain short the Dow. Uh, we're actually short from the exact high of August the 1st, and uh, we hold that position. But at the same time, long term, we are long still the diamonds from the, uh, the March 2020 low. And we still long diamonds, uh, diamonds and the UDOW from the uh, low of October this past year. Within that, we've got that short position. Each one of those we got on the day of the low. So we, we, we managed to get the high here, gave us a little bit of a cushion because we absolutely would have got stopped out if I kept, a, kept a, a tight stop and hadn't got that exact position because that big spike on the, uh, uh, was it the 10th? Yeah, the 10th of August, huge spike up to 35,578, 100 points off the exact high of that last move. Uh, thank goodness we were, we were able to hold that position. And we are short still the um, semiconductors from two points off the all-time high. And that was back at the, the high was 7.30 on the 31st of July. And the next day had a, not a very good candle close. It went underneath the previous doji high of the of that all-time high that previous candle so with the before the open we went short uh, just over 159 remain short and we've had the sxs we didn't get the sx again but look even now the series are telling me that we're getting really close to some kind of how can i put it some kind of a test of the internal strength i'm not saying a major bounce or anything and the reason i say that because you've done your one-to-one -to, -one to the short side um, within that context, um, it's gone underneath the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone of the weekly chart. It's trying to get above it, and it's not, and I suspect it's just a little bit more weakness, and then that comes for a big test. The stochastic in the weekly chart is down at 18%. 
and yet the on-balance volume is still quite good. We might have to see that before this is all over. Uh, the on-balance volume, look how it gave that beautiful turnaround back in December of 2022, right at the end of December, to confirm the move to the upside. So all I'm saying is semis lead, lead, lead us up, semis lead us down. They showed a little bit of strength yesterday. And you can actually see it translated because with the weakness that we're seeing right now, the day is young. The S&P uh, is down 43 points just in the time that we've been on the air. Uh, it's down a little bit further. It's trying to rally now. But and the, and the Dow is down 258. I would have told you that under these conditions, at this particular point where you've got the waterfall cascade to the downside in gold, um, I would have anticipated that if there was a big move down today and the day is young, we could have a two in one day where we're we are down into the noontime hour, and whatever we're down, we double that to the downside uh, in the afternoon if this weakness persists. But I see uh, some buying coming in, uh, and we'll see how that unfolds. In the meantime, back at the ranch, um, I would have thought that the Dow would have been down about 550 at this particular point, and the S&P about 68 to 73 points, and then we would get the very ugly uh, um, close. But also, I, it's very seldom when you get major, major turnarounds, not on a weekend or a Friday or a Monday. Uh, in the middle of the week, it happens, but it doesn't happen that often. So I'm not anticipating that we get some kind of major turnaround here. I can, I'm anticipating that there's, and the reason why we grabbed the long position on this major, this pretty serious sell-off this morning with a very tight stop is because I see rotational strength and it keeps coming into different stocks at different times. And that very often allows you to hold the big downside or the big upside when you've got some stocks that are actually rallying. Like within the Dow, we've got, say, Microsoft's very sharply lower. UNH is down. But you do have some. No, I can't find them. Home Depot's down six. There, let me just see. I haven't got the, I don't think there's the updated one. Uh, let me just ch check it right now so that I'm talking apples to apples. Yeah, you've got some uh, Dow stocks that are just very, very slightly down, uh, and some are actually rallying a little bit, some of the previously weaker ones. And that's what I mean. Sometimes it, it just creates a, an imbalance, and that imbalance favors that you don't accelerate to the trend that it's going in. All right. So yeah, let me do this because I don't want to really forget about it. These people are good enough to ask me questions. I'm going to answer them. So where do I get into Eli Lilly? Um, and I, this is the question. It's been a question for a little while. And I've said, let's just have patience because I think, um, give me a yell if it gets to the um, uh, 8, 5th, I think I said 8.39 to 8, 8 uh, I can't remember now, 8.32 area. And that yesterday, I think I looked at it or it was a Friday. I said, still not ready. You see this this 14 period moving average in the weekly chart. Eli Lilly LLY is a symbol down 15 at 522. Um, 518 is the, is the 14 period moving average. Look how well it held all the way through that congestion period going into the summer before all that news came about the new drugs, the large farmers, the farm. I mean, they, they have a fantastic lineup. And I said, yes, this is something you want to be looking at for longer term portfolios, but you have to have patience because if it's your first position, if it's a second position or third and you already have it from way down in the 200 or 300s, that's something completely different. But for a new position, I think you have to have patience and I would take the new position and I would skate it. I might have two, I might even have three entry entries into it. But they would be entries that you plan. It's not that you um, you are adding to a losing position. You you have you have a good feeling that you can get in once, and you would like a pullback. You don't have a good feeling that you want to get into your third position. I prefer to get only into the two, or sometimes even into the one. We've had that last earlier this year and last year. We had some fantastic uh, rallies in positions we had, and we didn't have the full position. I'm not complaining. I don't think my subscribers are complaining. Yes, we could have done that, what I often talk about, where you can double up and triple up on the way up because you've got this buy signal and buy mode. But you can't have a newsletter like that because you are, you're, 
you make them vulnerable. You can have some people that have never bought anything and they love what you do. And they say, I didn't miss, I didn't get that one in a double. For instance, the people who missed on my UEC position in the 360s and it, it skyrockets to 577. Wonderful percentage. We've been taking bits off all the time with tad off here, tad off there. Because I, I would rather have over the period of the year just really good gains, really solid gains and basically beat the, 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 the benchmarks and have a bit of comfortability. Even today, we, we got into a position that we've had in the 21 area, it went all the way to the 60s, and we got out, 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 and now we've got a core position, smaller core position, and we tried to get in today. It acted so nicely for a few days. I said, Let's, I think it's acting well enough to start a position, and um, but we're going to have a very tight stop. It gapped down after a beautiful, Beautiful session yesterday after three nice sessions before that. Gap down. We must have been in for a split second. I, I hate that. Maybe we didn't even have a chance to, you know, put in the stop before it was taken out. It was like that. I don't like that. But it was very tight stop. And we'll deal with it. So the Dow's now down 267. And I, I'm going to say to you, let's hold off on Eli Lake. I think as it gets close to 515 area, 518, let's look at it again. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, so that was Eli Lilly. I actually wanted to show you the VIX. The VIX now is up huge. It's up $1.84 at $19.45. The Dow is down 300 This is kind of the thing you see when the, 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 the Dow is down... 
probably 460 to 520. So there's a little bit of over-anticipation in the volatility index. Yes, in the Chapman Wave methodology, uh, I do put the notation. But remember, it, it has. this is an emotional indicator. So you can get, look, here's a peak C, the coronavirus business fed. This is back in 2020. This is actually March of 2020. This is when we went long. The diamond's still along the, that position. Um, and here it is again uh, on this big move up in 2022, peak C, and then it came down and made lower lows. So it doesn't work. It, sometimes it does, but that's just purely coincidental. Now, mostly I use it just to show the indicator, and I use the 200-period moving average in the daily, which is well above, which is at 1762, and the month and the weekly, which is at 2041, which I think will be a target at some point. So here, I know a lot of people are thinking there's going to be some kind of a turnaround. Let me explain what I'm looking at here. If you look at the dollar, and a question came in about the dollar. What, what, what do I think about the dollar? Well, first of all, we're along the dollar. We're along from, have a look at this. This is very interesting. Um, we're along from here. This is February of 2018. In the 88, we went along 90.07. It went to 102.99 and pulled back. I, I had to change this because it gets smoothed out. So let me just see if it's still 102. Yeah, 102.99, then dropped to 89.21. But my UUP, the, this is the dollar bull. Uh, this is the fund that can, you can trade the dollar index. Um, Hells, the stop, and we kept it and ran all the way to the last high. I forgot to type this in. 114.78. In September of 2022, 114.78. Let me just type that in. 114.78. And that was 9.20. What did I say it was? 22. All right. So, and then it pulls back again. Goes to just under 100. And now it's in this cup formation. Remember, I'm always looking at cup. Yes, your cup formation. Double top, 103.82 back in 2017. 102.99 in 2020. And then it comes back down. The low of 88.23 wasn't taken out because it went to 89.21. And then what happens is it runs up to 114, pulls back. So as I'm looking at it, the, the simple things to say in a in a bull phase, you look for higher highs and higher lows. It doesn't have to be higher lows, but they don't take out the low. But mostly you have higher highs. And then I can do the count, chart wave A, B, C, D. You could go to E, F, and G, but D is your objective. And it got to D there in 2017. It got to E in 2020. And it went to, an. O, this is an alternate count, F slash C. And the reason why I did it is because the UUP did go um, in, a, in a smoother way to a leg F and then a peak F. But the UUP is telling me that the nine period, the price is way above the nine. This is the monthly chart. The price is way above the nine period moving average. The nine is way above the fourteen. The MACD was not as strong as it was at that big high that back in uh, August or whatever it was, September. Yes, September uh, of last year. But look, it is good. The stochastic's kind of weak in the in the monthly chart. It is rounding at fifty percent. On balance volume is kind of weak. So as I'm looking at it here, I'm saying. We've seen this so often. The cup formation invariably, if you're making higher highs and higher lows, the rule of thumb is within this rectangle from the flag, you can have a cup formation. And the cup formation says, whoops, right there to the little doji candle, then up and around. It says you can get a bit of a lopsided, like in a, within a rectangle, you can get higher highs and higher lows. And if that's the case, it's very often that there's a rally just under, right on, or just above that left side high, and the UUP, the left side high was 20, oops, let me get it right here, it was right there, at 30.76 in September, 30.76, I'll just type that in here, so I don't have to keep doing that, 30.76, and we're at 29.98, we're not very far from it, but I, it's in the currencies, that's a long way to go. So my suspicion is, that we're going to go towards it. I wouldn't be surprised if this particular candle here will be a lot, there'll be a lot of resistance, maybe even before that, which is at 30.43, the candle of 
November. All right, within that context, let's look at the USD JPY. On a very short term basis, the reason why I wanted to go long this morning with a tight stop um, in one of the indexes is that, did I type that? In? Oh, typed it. Is, is the reason, the reasoning is that I think the dollar is getting very close to some kind of resistance very near term just for a bit of a breather. But if you're looking at the US dollar Japanese yen currency pair, this rectangle that gives you a lopsided gravy cup formation is doing exactly what this particular technique in the Chapman wave strives to do. Not every single time, but I have to tell you, it, I, I can't give you a percentage, but I'm sure from my mind, it's over 80%. It goes just under, right on, or just above. If it goes for two out of three bars, doesn't matter what time frame, closes above the left side high, you've raised your base of support. But as it is, it's going to get to this level. You're at 148.97, uh, down 0.93, and this is the monthly chart. Look at the daily chart. Leg E reverses, leg E, last time it reversed at an E, then it went to an F and then pulled back, made a lower low, and then started a brand new move. There's your Chapman Way falling exclamation break out to the upside. We just had a little mini one there. And we're in a leg D, and we're almost at the left side high as a target. So I, I'm looking at this and saying, there's a chance that we're getting kind of close to, at least let, let me put it together with a TLT. So the TLT... Um, took out the left side low. Uh, when it does that, you've got two out of three bars in which to get back to at least try to get back, in this case, to 91.85. This is the second bar in the weekly chart that is underneath 91.85. It's at 86.09, down 83, um, 83 cents. This is, this is tough because this is just saying to me, you've got your on-balance volume, the blue line. This is a weekly chart, over oversold. But... Stochastics at seven percent. When it's at seventy percent, that's the equivalent of being at ninety-three percent. When I, where I say flat and at ninety-three percent is really bullish. In this case, not flat yet. It's still um, accelerating down. Uh, it just doesn't tell me that I've got a huge turnaround in bonds just yet, and, and that's a problem. That's a real problem, right? So, on a very short-term basis, we're getting close to levels that say. Just the elastic band is stretched enough to have a little bit of a, a, a bounce. But that is just, I don't have any indicator yet to say that it's going to do that. Next question came in, what about the gap in the GDX? Now, I just offhand, I can't remember exactly where that gap was, um, the, what the number was. I know I looked at it before. Um, but I, I suspect even here, based on my on-balance volume, Turning, the stochastics are 7% in the gold miners ETF at 26.14, up 16 cents. I'll talk about it when we get back because I think this is getting ready for at least an attempt to have a bounce. Just a bounce. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm just doing this. I don't like to keep these uh, patterns uh, up too long because it just uh, says to me that uh, it, it just, it's very easy to see. But for my purpose, it gets a little messy. So here's a chapter where it's the falling X formation that I was talking about earlier on. This is the inversion. It goes from an arch formation to a second arch. It's like an M. Takes out the left side low. Look at the beautiful proportion of the left side to the right side. Look at this, to that low right there. Then you just click it like this, and you go to the right. Oh, man, look at that. That just says that that weakness you've just taken out, really important support right there. Look at that. Plumb line right there to the penny, to the to the day. It takes it out. That's green way up. And now what we've got is the area I'm looking at here is 25.65 would be the one-to-one -one base of this falling X formation. But believe me, it could go all the way from there, lower down. So all I'm looking at here is to say <clears throat> that in the context of support levels, let me just draw this particular trend line here to show you that this is the pattern that I would look at. Come on. Oh, there must be a lot of trading going on because, okay. So this is the channel wave inside track. Here we go, inside track. Propellant zone, look, every time the GDX has gone into this little range right here, this little mini channel, I call it the Chapman Wave Inside Track. The reason why I say Chapman Wave always is because it's part of my technique, part of something I use all the time. And here we are. It's got a hold. So this is a kind of an important moment. Now, what I wanted to look at <clears throat> is within this context, using the GDX to go minus, look at silver. I mean, silver was leading the pack. I, I remember with uh, Tom's uh, webinar that he did uh, for his subscribers to the Gold Report, uh, talking about saying, "Silver, don't be surprised if silver acts weaker than gold. It's been strong." But if I, he said, that looking at volume, uh, so and he was correct. And look at that silver arching over like this, and in the weekly chart. So, and the monthly chart finally, for the first time in a while, has gone S, but the month is still, we just begun the month. I'm not going to talk about it as if, but it, it, it's interesting. It got so close that at this particular point, the uh, continuous silver contract monthly chart has joined the others by having the nine period moving average going under the 14. So it's going to be a work in progress because, yes, this left side low is going to be very important to hold 
21, 25 in the continuous put contract, just as in the gold, in the GDX, we took out that left side low. Now you've got to say, well, there's a chance the next left side low is way down here in the 20, 22, 21 area. But we're at 26, so it's a long way to go. I don't want to get there. I'd rather say, you know what, in this particular pattern, it's a much clearer, and they haven't really been working as they kind of been working, the one to ones to the downside. You know, this is something I've done for years and years and years. I don't do it in as formal a way uh, as someone like Larry does, and he uses this particular technique so beautifully in his own work. I just have it when it appears to me that it's a, it's a moment of importance, and here's your one to one. We're almost there in the GDX. This is using a different technique, that takes you to 25, 2530, actually. So within that context, the SLV has done the same thing. I don't want to date a beat horse. Is that the expression? Anyway, whatever it is, uh, look, a gap's down from the 200 period moving average. So this is going to be very important. There aren't any supports until you get to right here, 16, is that, no, 1838. And here we're at 1950. So that's the silver contract. All right. So to, to answer the question, and um, uh, Baseball in the Den says, uh, GDI and Tiger TV, GDX pulls down into the gap of 11,422 on lighter volume. Oh, I didn't see that. 11, let me just do that. I'm going to load the boat, he said. So GDX, 11,24, I didn't see the date. So this is GDX. Let's just go there. 11, which is November of 2022, right? 11, yep, 11,4. 11, 4, 20, there it is, okay. So 11, 4, oh, you're talking about this gap right here? Woohoo! Yeah, okay, that's way down in the 20, oh, that's what I was talking about. Okay, you, we're on the same same um, um, trajectory here by saying that would be just major support, but here we are at 26. I don't want to go there until we go step by step to the downside. Now, uh, on a very short-term basis, let me just show you something that I think is, is going to be very interesting. We're making lower lows. Low lows and lower highs. You see that pink nine period moving average that turned it turned pink right there at 1002 as I was doing the uh, update for the uh, the news, and the, it was at 45 40 sorry 4305. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are at 4268. Down 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 down, um, and this is a straight line down. Uh, no, this is a trough F slash G, which has to be an alternate count. So interesting. This is going to be F, oh my. Maybe we get that horrible uh, day today. F slash A. And this is the 10 minute chart and G slash B. All right, we'll, we'll, do, we'll follow it by the end of the end of the another 10 minutes. We'll go through it again. All right, so that, those are the things I wanted to look at. A couple of questions came in. Right, so, hack is, is um, the hack is the ETF. The cybersecurity ETF, and it's down 65 cents at 51.30. It did very nicely, but it got repelled where? In this Chamway falling X formation, right at the inside track repellent zone, right here. Remember, I like to do another little mini channel, and it got repelled right there. It couldn't break out to the green. And that just says to me, we've got to be careful. I've got it on my list for subscribers, something we want to get into. But I'm very fussy about this. I, I need to be convinced that we're getting this. A crowd in the sector um, had a lovely rally. Look, it's, uh, the daily looks fabulous. Broke above the Chamway falling X formation. Then it closed below it today. But it was up just briefly. Made a peak E um, at 164. It's down five. Uh, the weekly chart has a series of cl cluster patterns. Uh, this is a G slash C right here. Could even be a C1, C2. Holding very nicely. Then you look at the monthly chart and say, wait, what, what, what are you getting excited about, mister? This is this is not a great pattern at all. It's just a recovery. It's actually a gray uh, leg A in the weekly chart, a monthly chart. Magni's okay. Nine period hasn't turned positive. And the stochastic's only at 62%. On balance volume is very good. And that's what I'm looking at in the, the mix in the different sectors is quite phenomenal. Uh, there's a question that came in, and now I don't see it. I did that. 
I did that. Okay, I've done the two major questions there and a question right now. Okay, so on a very short-term basis, I want you to show you something else that I think is important. I just want to go to the dollar briefly, and that is to say that this particular move up, where the stochastic is starting to fall but is still strong at 82%, this gray line of the day, the relative strength didn't confirm the rally here. The MACD is good. <clears throat> The 9 is still over the 14, but this is exactly what I'm, I'm a little concerned about in terms of the dollar, that it gives a lot of false readings in the sense that it looks fantastic, and then it looks like it's going to break down, and then it holds the 9 period moving average and moves up. I mean, false in the sense that you think it's going to break down, and yet it doesn't. So that's, I talked about that briefly as, oh, I, had, I have a whole list of things I want you to talk about again today. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, so rather than uh, do uh, what I want you to do, I'll do that tomorrow, this time tomorrow. Um, I'm going to just say... Within the context of this particular candle right here in the weekly chart, look what's happening in the QQQ um, as you're going lower. If this QQQ, you see this little doji candle for the weekly, if the Qs go underneath uh, 351.36, they don't have to close it, just go under it. I think that's when you'll start to see this green uh, nine period moving average turn pick. So let me just do this for the day. I'm looking at this and saying, <clears throat> 
some kind of a turnaround needs to happen so that afternoon, that's uh, in an hour and uh, five minutes time, uh, if the Dow is down, it's down 360 right now, the s and is down 55. If we're anywhere close to this particular area, if there's no rally between 12 and 115, there's a chance that we can even go lower. I don't know about doubling on the day. That's, 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 uh, we, I, we haven't had too many of these double the noontime price for a long time. But this is exactly at 130. The, everything needs to be turning around. But that wouldn't be the turnaround. I don't see us close to the, the turnaround. I see a bounce, a really good bounce on a, on a very oversold condition. And the more we bounce in this, without making a really, without the VIX going into the 28 to uh, 32 area, um, the greater the chance. Yeah, we've just started leg C in the VIX in the daily chart. <clears throat> This is um, a leg A, I believe it is, in the weekly chart. And there's your support level. So let's make it clear. If after 1.30 this afternoon, the Dow is more than, I'd say, 190 down, um, then expect a lousy close. But if it's starting to improve and it's improving, gets to like a, a minus 110, then a minus 80, and the S&P is now down only 16 points, you could see some kind of rally if the dollar continues to decline. And I never even had a chance to talk about bonds. And bonds need to come, come go rally so that yields.